thought I'd make a video here of these a lot of people trying to tell me they can tell if the rings are stuck by looking through the exhaust port. The exhaust port's on this side, it was where the exhaust port is. Opposite the exhaust port's where the split in the rings is. You can't have this this gap in the rings hitting the exhaust port, that's why there's a pin in there so the rings can't rotate. You'll notice that this one, you see it's it's loose here, but on this side it won't budge. You can't even get that ring off there. That's how stuck it is. And the sticking starts right here. Now you can't see anything going through the exhaust port. That's a waste of time looking in there to see if the rings are stuck or not. You have got to take the cylinder off where you can look at these these rings on the piston to tell if it's stuck. Now this one I'm going to try to pry it loose a little bit. It's pretty stuck. We'll see that. But just, just on this end here, that's, and I don't want to break the ring if I can help it, see? There, now I think I got it, see? Now I can get that ring off there. And it's pretty, going to be pretty easy to get off, I think. Just pry it a little bit with your thumbnail, and there you go. But that thing was really starting to stick here. If you'd have kept going with that thing, you'd have had a seizure with it sooner or later. This piston only has one ring, too, so it's real important on this one. I think I made the point before about this little hole here where it breaks into the crankshaft on these this is a Rotax 583 are drilled at an angle right here there's one on both ends of course there's another one down in there uh, that break out into the crankshaft to get oil through that uh, last bearing on the crankshaft and since they went to the trouble of putting that hole in there I have the belief that it's pretty important to, this idea was to get some circulation there there's actually two things I plan on doing uh, one is this is an e-gear box and I need to machine the register to fit on the E gearbox, which would have to do with this land right here. So I need to machine that to the right diameter for it to fit. Uh, this is a snowmobile engine, so to use it for aircraft, I'll have to to tap these holes. Uh, these holes got to be drilled and tapped to hold the gearbox on, but other than that, I can't see any reason why you can't use it. Looks the same to me. And uh, what I intend to do is to make maybe a little bit neater fixed. I, I, I'll show you what happens. They, the, reason, the reason I think it's very important is when they put this bearing in there, actually, I should put it this way maybe, uh, when they put that bearing in there, I think you can see how it blocks most of this port where it breaks out. Now there's a seal that goes in there that blocks, blocks the rest of it. So really, with the seal in there, all you have is a very narrow little gap where that oil can come through there or make any kind of a draw or allow any gases coming through. Uh, up to that transfer port through that hole. Uh, so where it breaks out, they put a bearing right over top of it, which seems like, well, they had a, a hole here, plenty sufficient, big enough for this. So what I was doing was using a do-more and just elongating that, particularly since those seals, a lot of times they have little feet on them that, that if you aren't watching it would you'd put it right over that hole and it kind of really restricts it then it really blocks that hole so you can see that in one of my other videos what I was talking about there but uh, what I intend to do is maybe make it a little bit neater by machining in here a groove for that oil that's much longer and it would look a little bit neater and since I have to machine this register here anyways for the gearbox to fit on, I figure at the same time I'll try to machine a groove in here. It'll go all the way around. 
uh, like most of my modifications, I decide, well, is it going to hurt anything? Well, I can't see it hurting anything, and I got an idea it might help. So, because there's no reason these engines should run 300 hours and have these bearings go bad. I mean, these are really big bearings, uh, you know, for the for the size of the engine. So, uh, anyways, what I'm going to do is I've machined a mandrel here, uh, which has a, a center hole in the end. So I can run it against the center, and I intend to put that in there, just like so. It's machined to the same diameter as the bearing, uh, maybe a thousandth or so bigger. It's aluminum. Uh, this piece here is a piece of titanium, but that's just because of something I had to put in there to make this gizmo. Uh, I just Loctited that in there. So once I put the other half on there and put the bolts in, when I snug those up, uh, this will be in there tight enough that I can can drive it and it should hold it nice, centered, and true in there. And of course, I'll have another one on the other side to drive it over here uh, and do the same thing on this side so that this hole has a little bit more area uh, for oil and gases to go through there. So it'll, hopefully it'll carry them through this bearing got to go through there that's what it's got to do and uh, otherwise you just get a very small amount of oil and then what's in there it gets beat up this thing can, I guess this engine runs like 8,000 rpm so that's that's pretty fast for a ball bearing like that and uh, if it doesn't have enough oil it's going to run too hot and that's why I think it melts these plastic um, you know the little plastic uh, ball separators in there that cage so uh, that's that's what I'm trying to do and that's pretty much what this video is going to be about. Now what I've done here is I've I've put the mandrel in here so I can turn this thing. It's clamped in there. This aluminum was turned to the same size as the bearings. And that's going to be able to drive it and also put a center in the end here so it'll hold steady while I machine uh, this step right here and this face across here. And of course I have to drill and tap these holes to hold the gearbox on there because this diameter here does not match this diameter on the gearbox because it hasn't been machined yet. It was made for a snowmobile, so they didn't need to. Have to watch how deep you go on these. Seven, 1764 tap drill. Uh, it's a eight millimeter, 1.25 pitch bolts go in there. And uh, you, you can go down, it, it breaks out about halfway to these holes here. Uh, you gotta kinda watch your depth so you don't go too deep. It, some of the holes it might take just a little bit out the bottom of the hole. They've already got these cast in there with kind of a pilot hole so it's pretty easy to drill. You don't have much problem there. Now you want to have about one inch of threads as far as thread depth goes here so you got to get it tapped all the way to the bottom of those holes and so you you drill them down in there with a with that drill about an inch deep or so it's a blind hole flat bottom blind hole there's you know no place for the chips to go so you got to keep working the tap back out to get rid of the chips one thing I like to use is a blowgun like this puts the air in the bottom of the hole by putting that end on there you can get these little things at Harbor Freight and the blowgun and everything but uh, they're real good for tapping holes and getting the chips out of the bottom
haven't quite to the bottom so I gotta keep going until I get it worked to where the tap goes all the way to the bottom of the hole which on this tap which has about one inch of thread on it that puts it down about another I'd say that's about it there now this is the dangerous part this is a 13 inch lathe and of course I don't want this tube to hit anything otherwise I just about could do this on the 9 inch lathe but I have to take that tube out and I don't want to mess with that but it looks like my setup here is alright expanded the chuck jaws inside the casting on this end and I have it on this so I got plenty of room to get in there with a tool and see if I can make that little groove I wanted to put in there and also machine this step on here there's my setup uh, this tool bit just goes into that corner I was trying for uh, four inches uh, 720 thousands I think that's what it takes to fit the gearbox I I measured the gearbox and uh, I guess I'm about ready to try it but it was basically machining this little uh, landing here they, they've got a little a little locating ledge here that's going to put the transmission you know the gearbox concentric with the shaft and then face it off I got these holes all tapped now and uh, I think it's going to fit so I'll give it a shot and see what happens I have to put the transmission gearbox on there to see if it fits now okay uh, this fits nice the gear the the gearbox can rotate around on there nice. I've got this faced off. So uh, my locator is machined the correct diameter, which is 4 inches 720, in case anybody wants to know and don't have a gearbox. That seemed to fit nicely. Swivel's good. And uh, I tried to get as close to 4 inches 720 as I could. And that seems to do the trick. So uh, I suppose I could make a mandrel go through there that... Uh, you know would be one piece but I figured the separate pieces would do what I want could have even made it out of a piece of wood or oak or plastic or something else but I used aluminum and because uh, that's what I had laying around so the next thing I have to do now will be to machine the groove inside here that I want to put in there's a hole right there I don't know if the, that's the one that goes at an angle up here that hole I'm going to try to put a a little groove in there so that oil can transfer all the way around this thing not just from that little hole which they put the bearing right over top of it kind of blocks it I I don't quite understand why they did that I mean they surely should have seen that well we should have do something about that you know uh, take a little woodruff cutter or something put a groove in there something so that oil can get past the bearing but they didn't do it that's, that's the OD of the bearing is what I'm talking about so uh, I'm going to see if I can't modify that next. But All right, took me about oh, 15 minutes or so to grind this. Uh, I have to make a tool bit to be able to get in there. And this tool bit started out the same as this tool bit. And you just do it on a hand grinder, a, what they call a bench grinder. And you do it by hand and this is where most of the grinding was done here a big grinding wheel just pushed it in there by hand and ground that off you have to keep dipping it in water to cool it off because you don't want to turn it blue uh, and then this where it's going to put that groove in there I radius that off which I hope you can see ways uh, I put clearance all around here because you don't want anything rubbing on anything when it goes in there to cut and put a little radius in here and that'll put a little radius groove and I won't go too deep maybe oh, 30 thousandths on a side is probably enough but it sure will make it easier for that oil to get through there so that's what I'm doing now well it looks like now I'm about ready to 
turn things around and start assembling this thing. Now, now you can see where I've used a, a, a Dremel tool to kind of uh, put a small channel here from this hole into this groove that I machined in here, which is just a radius groove to allow oil to flow uh, where that bearing covers up that hole. And it'll flow all the way around in there, no matter which way the engine's. If it's up right side up or upside down, it won't make a difference. Now on this side here, I couldn't really machine it. I couldn't, my lathe isn't quite big enough to be able to put the groove in there. I couldn't figure a way to do that because of this big uh, bell housing here for the flywheel. So, I just went back to the same thing where I just used the the uh, Dremel tool and enlarge that hole and put kind of a slot back in here but you're still gonna have to be careful where you put the seal in there so that that oil can get past there but I think this will probably work all right uh, this particular one you'll you'll notice that there's no groove in here on the seal to lock in the seal but there's a plate that screws on in here in the front and and when that plates on there the seal can't blow out so that's how that one works on that but uh, other than that I'd say the main thing that that's a difference on these is it has uh, some sort of an electronic uh, ignition advance uh, on the ignition system also uh, unlike the 582 which has these transfer ports uh, here and you see the the hole I was talking about right here those are the transfer ports it has another transfer port on the back in addition that's probably what gives them a whole lot more horsepower on this engine than the 582 uh, along with the ray valve so the combination of those two things uh, is supposed to give these engines a lot more horsepower and now uh, I have it machined for putting the aircraft gearbox on there you could put a C or an E gearbox on here real well, no problem. And I think they're plenty strong enough to handle the power. Uh, the other thing I did was I tapped all these holes uh, to make sure they're clean before I put it back together. So I run a tap in all the holes, these holes, these holes, every, every hole that's got a thread in it, I run a tap through it. Even these holes on the outside, someday somebody might want to... Uh, mount something in that hole right there so I tapped those holes and cleaned them out so there's no Loctite or rust or dirt or anything in them and of course blew them all out real good with an air hose including these where the transfer ports are to make sure there's no chips in this thing because that's a real important thing to do so I guess I'm ready to put her back together